بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوت الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین اللهم اخرجنی من ظلمات الوهم و اکرمنی بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علینا ابواب رحمتک و انشر علینا خزائن علومک برحمتک یا ارحم الراحمین السلام علی الحسین و علی علی ابن الحسین و علی اولاد الحسین و علی اصحاب الحسین و رحمت الله و برکات فرس آئی کنگرادولیت یو فور دی برث انیورسری آف امام حسین علیہ السلام and also beginning of the month of شعبان and in advance for the birth anniversary of امام زین العابدین علیہ السلام and <clears throat> Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. May inshallah this be a time of reflection, a time of reviewing our actions, our life plans, and see how much we are in the right direction or God forbid, maybe we have gone you know, far from that direction. If you are on the right direction, we thank Allah and should be determined to keep it. If not, quickly we should go back. This life is too short and the only thing that is worth spending your life is to follow the examples of awliyaullah and bi'a and imams and holy people. So may Allah inshallah enable us to follow their footsteps inshallah. We said that uh, we study after the concept of light, the concept of dhikr, which is very key concept, very fundamental concept. Even dhikr is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu udhkurullah dhikran kathira is an instruction for us. But also Allah says udhkuruni azkurkum. This is a description that if we remember him, he will remember us. Which implies that if you don't remember him you will be deprived of this kind of dhikr Allah never forgets his creatures but this is a special kind of remembrance this is remembrance with favor so even Allah may remember <coughs> or may not remember in this particular sense. Please pay attention. Uh, human beings, jinns, all creatures, they do tasbih, they praise Allah, which is remembrance of Allah. Angels remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything is a matter of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what, inshallah, I want to talk about it today is the significance of dhikr in Islamic spirituality. Uh, I have uh, had uh, different lectures on dhikr, for example, in Islamic plan for life. Uh, one session was on dhikr. That can be a useful discussion for you. We had also other occasions that we talked about dhikr. I have also talked about tasbih, uh, that is also related, about salawat, that is also related. So I will try to share with you some of the points which are mentioned in more details in different lectures. But these points are very dear to me because these are results of uh, reflections and uh, putting pieces of puzzle gradually together. 
in the Quran we find that light of human beings is possible to increase or decrease as we explained in details and in particular we said there are three things that add our light one is iman afaman sharahallahu sadrahu lil islam fa huwa ala nuran min rabbi or other verses that we talked for example the verses from surah tahrim surah hadid about mu'minin that on the day of judgment yawma tara al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat nuruhum yas'a bayna aydihim wa bi'aymanihim this is light of iman then the light of amal salih righteous deeds we talked about every action which is done for the sake of allah which is good in itself not that you mistakenly do something for the sake of allah so if it, there is husn fi'li and husn fa'li it's amal salih and then it has light and we said this light is in addition to the reward or answers lahum ajruhum wa nuruhum there is reward and there is light this was surah al hadid verse 19 walladhina amanu billahi wa rasulihi ulaika hum as-siddiqun wa ash-shuhada 'inda rabbihim lahum ajruhum wa nuruhum walladhina kafaru wa kadhabu bi ayatina ulaika ashab al jahim their iman their amal salih they have light even every action wuzu has light salat has light hajj has light ziyara has light every action has light and their lights are not the same so the light that you get from salat is different from the light that you get from fasting they're different but all have light uh, once uh, one of the people who was benefiting from ayatollah ansari hamadani saw a great light and he had a kind of you know vision he saw massive light he asked ayatollah ansari hamadani alayhi, was this the light of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it was so massive not comparable to any light in dunya that he thought maybe this is the light of Allah then I tell answer him says no this was light of your wuzu light of Allah is beyond you know description so even light of wuzu is so much that you cannot compare it to the light of you know uh, worldly things and al wuzu ala al wuzu nurun Allah Noor and I have you know some reflections on Vozu and the drops of water in Vozu inshallah another time I can explain with you for you inshallah then we have light which is from Zikr light of Zikr is this is my point my argument light of the in my understanding is not just coming after iman and amal saleh yes it is true that when you have iman and amal saleh with remembrance of allah you get more and more light as we said rajalun la tulihim tajaratun wala bay'un an dhikrillah they reach the point that their house becomes where the light of Allah is spread but if you look carefully this is my argument we can say from Quranic perspective 
even iman is a matter of remembrance of Allah amal saleh is also remembrance of Allah so zikr is not just what a mu'min who does amal saleh do zikr is very inclusive includes iman includes amal saleh includes salawat it includes you know other kinds of zikr anything positive that you do can be a matter of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is my claim when it comes to iman being a matter of zikr it's very clearly understandable from the ayah that we mentioned before and even today I mentioned part of it afaman sharahallahu sadrahu lil islam fa huwa ala nur min rabbih surah an nur verse 40 if you continue the ayah you realize that this nur of islam and submission to god which is a sign of faith is because of remembrance allah of allah because it says afaman sharaha allah sadrahu lil islam fa huwa ala nur min rabbih fa wailun lil qasiyati qulubuhum min dhikr allah ulaika fi dhalal mubin so zalala and hidayah misguidance and guidance faith or disbelief all are because some people are doing zikr some people they cannot do zikr those who cannot do zikr is because their heart has become hard فَوَيْلٌ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ It's not by accident, by chance that someone does not remember Allah. They must have done something wrong that has made their heart unable to remember Allah. Heart must be soft like a, you know, for example, piece of land. If the soil has not received any water any rain little by little it becomes very strong very hard you cannot grow anything sometimes it becomes like stone like some of the hearts that become like a stone if heart is soft then it is closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the power of also suffering because when you suffer your heart becomes soft ana indal munkasarat qulubuhum those whose hearts are broken then they have that softness they can be very close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so There are two kinds of people based on this ayah ayah 40 of surah an-nur chapter 24 There are uh, sorry uh, sorry I I I mentioned the reference for the above uh, the verse which was above it surah zumar verse 22 Please correct your notes surah zumar which is chapter 39 verse 22 afa man sharaha allah sadrahu lil islam fa huwa ala nuran min rabbi So two people two kinds of people are um compared one is to be understood by comparison one is mentioned those who have sharh sadr their chest is opened up there's no closure or blockage the light of allah gets into their heart because the chest is open so the light go through their chest reaches the heart they are enlightened they have iman and the other group is not mentioned but when we say fawailun lil qasiyati qulubuhum min dhikr you can understand that what was the 
other part afaman sharaha allah sadrahu lil islam fa huwa ala nur min rabbi something is not mentioned yeah it's muqaddar is he like someone whose chest is not opened up for islam doesn't have light as a result you understand by comparison but fawailun lil qasiyat qulubuhum min dhikrillah says that the other group that are not mentioned but are meant they are muqaddar because taqdir means when you don't mention but you mean it they are the people that cannot remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the power of zikr so if you, someone says why you believe that zikr is the reason for iman you can quote this ayah in addition to other things or for amal saleh aqam salat al zikri even salat is for zikr for the remembrance of allah inna salata tanha an al fahsha wa al munkar wa la dhikr allah akbar fasting everything is zikr even in the ayah which we discussed about fi buyut an adhan allah and turfa'a ba yuzkara fi hasmu yusabbihu lahu fi ha bil quduf wal asal rijalun la tulihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah then it says wa iqam as-salah wa ita'a az-zakah this iqam as-salah iqamat as-salat iqam as-salah ta is dropped iqam as-salah wa ita'a az-zakah are two cases of dhikr this is atf khas al al'am Salat is zikr. Fasting is also zikr. Hajj is zikr. Zakat is zikr. Sadaqah is zikr. And just remembering Allah and maybe not being engaged in any you know act of worship is zikr. Even if you don't say anything if you remember allah by heart again this is a, of course it's an action of heart but it's not salat or fasting or you know recitation etc still it's zikr so zikr in my understanding is very comprehensive concept and it's the only way to get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opposite to zikr is either forgetfulness or heedlessness nisyan or ghafla so either we remember allah or we forget or sometimes you don't forget but you become heedless heedlessness seems to be less serious although is more common for example there are people who have forgotten god this is very serious ya ayuhal ladina amanu la takunu kal ladina nasullah fa ansahum anfusahum if you forget allah then it means that you forget yourself it seems that this cannot be said for believers for pious people pious people are not the people who have forgotten themselves and then forgot god but ghafla can happen even for believers for pious people inna alladhina taqaw إذا مسهم طائف من الشيطان تذكروا فإذا هم مبصرون. Those who are muttaqi, who are God fearing, who are pious, when a group of roaming satans, roaming means they are going around, they are, you know, going to see who is 
heedless so that they can attack. But the first thing that they do, they touch. If they see <clears throat> that you welcome them, they remain and they try to become little by little your companion, your Karin, to stay there with you. If they see they are, you know, able to do something, then they say, okay, let's stay here. If you reject them, then they try to go and attack other people and come back when you may be heedless. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا In my understanding, this تَذَكَّرُوا means that they had some kind of ghafla. They didn't forget Allah altogether. Yeah, they are muttaqi. But for some reason, the Satans were able to touch them. Okay, but then they are able to see. So it means that there was a moment, there was a time that they were not mutazakir, they were not mubsir. So this is ghafla. Both forgetfulness and heedlessness are very harmful and all our problems go back to this to forgetfulness and heedlessness as long as we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are on the right track and we are making progress in dua kumail we say Allahumma inni ataqarrabu ilayka bizzikrik how I seek nearness to you. We talked about the concept of Qurb before in the first semester. How we get closer to Allah, how we can be mutaqarrib by zikr. Ataqarrabu ilayka bi zikrik. You remember him and then he takes you closer. To himself. Uzkuruni as Korko. We need his help. Without remembering him and asking for support, we cannot do this journey by ourselves. Therefore, we say, I ask you to be my intercessor for taking me towards yourself so first we make a request then he will he will offer that help that you are asking so our dua precedes our action you can make dua for moving towards Allah and then he takes you towards himself you are then actually moving this is the power of dua dua is not limited by our current condition even people whose you know duas are blocked still they can make one dua and that is for istighfar. Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub allati tahbasu du'a. Okay, if du'as are blocked, then how can you ask for forgiveness? It means that there is one du'a that even when every other du'a is blocked, it still can work. So Allah never completely closes the door. Or as we said before, even on the day of judgment, you can ask for forgiveness and you can make dua. Mu'minin say, Atmim lana nurana waghfir lana. Although normally actions stop when we die. 
But on the day of judgment, mu'minin can still do istighfar, can still make request for uh, completion of their light. Dua is very powerful. Inshallah, after dhikr, we will talk about fikr and dua. These are very important concepts in Islamic spirituality. So, astashfi'u bika ila nafsik. And mechanism is this, that I want to get close to Allah. I see that I am not able to do it myself. But I have been given the power of dua, request. At least you can make request. If you cannot do anything, make request. Ask Allah. This is very important because this is the sign of your thirst. The sign of your great need and acknowledgement of that. So say to Allah that I want you. So, the way for taqarrub is zikr. Allahumma inni ataqarrubu ilayka zikr. Or, in the same du'a kumail, we say, Ya man ismuhu dawa wa zikruhu shifa. If you reflect on this, if zikr is healing, then what is illness? Forgetfulness and heedlessness are two causes of illness. If we remember him, we are in good health. If we don't remember him because we have forgotten him or we are heedless, then we are ill. Spiritually, we are ill. This can even lead to spiritually dying. These are the people who are dead spiritually. But those who remember Allah, they are alive. So, remembrance of Allah is the healing and name of Allah is the medicine. Ya man ismuhu taba. Ism, name of Allah, something that reminds us of Allah, something that connects us with Allah is Ism. So any manifestation, any reminder of Allah, anything that helps us with remembering Him is Dawa, is medicine. What is the difference between Dawa and Shifa? Dawa is something that you have to take. If you take and don't do something to damage it, then you will have shifa. If I take dawa and also still get poison, the dawa is not going to work. But if I just take dawa, look after my diet, don't do anything to damage it, then inshallah I will be healed. Okay? So, Ism of Allah is Dawa, but if you take and absorb Ism of Allah, then it is Zikr, it is Shifa. It's like, for example, if you have the best medicine for you, suppose the doctor has diagnosed your illness correctly and has prescribed you the best medicine, you take the medicine and put it on the shelf. Is this going to help you? No. Or if you repeat the name of the medicine, hundred times you repeat the name of the medicine. It doesn't help. You have to take it. It has to go inside. For physical illness has to go inside body. For a spiritual illness has to go inside heart. If remembrance of Allah goes inside heart, then healing process starts.
If you remember, we said Muqarrabun are those who continuously remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We saw it for human beings in Surah An-Nur when we talked about Ayah 35 and 36, 7, 8, you know, these uh, four verses from Allahu Nur as Samawat Wal Ard up to Layadziahumullahu Ahsana Ma Amilu wa Yazidahum Min Fadle Wallahu Yardukuman Yashaw Begayr Hesab. These four verses are very important. In this passage, we said that fi buyutin adhan Allah an turfa wa yudkara fi hasmu is the spiritual house for the people that always do tasbih and hamd. Nothing make them forget Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Even if they are buying, selling, <coughs> nothing make them forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rajalun. La tulhihim tijaratun wala bay'un and dhikrillah. Continuously they remember Allah. But we also had discussion before that muqarrabun are the people who continuously remember Allah. It is for Angels as well. Rajalun la tuliyam tajaratun is for human beings. Fi buyutin, these buyut are inhabited by human beings. But angels also are muqarrab and they continuously remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The difference is that angels seem not to have houses from where. The light is spread for us. Fi buyutin as in Allah, as we said, buyutul anbiya, not buyutul malaika. So, malaika are not functioning in the same way that anbiya function. Anbiya have houses that we can visit and get light. So, if you remember when we were talking about Mugarrab, I talked about the concept of Endiya. We had discussion about the concept of Endiya. And I quoted also from Allah Tabatabai from Al Mizan that Muqarrabun are not only angels. And we said that Muqarrab is someone who has no hijab between him and God. Uh, refresh yourself with those discussions. So, for example, in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 206, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين عند ربك Those who are very close to God. Because we said no one is ma'allah. Yeah, we said ma'allah is shirk. Allah is with us, but we are not with him in the exact sense. There is no ma'iyya. لا تدعو مع الله أحدا. No one can be called next to God. The maximum is عند الله or لد الله. Not مع الله. Okay? We talked about this. إن الذين عند ربك. Those who are close to your Lord. They are مقرب. لا يستكبرون عن عبادته. They have no hesitation to worship him, to serve him. They do it without any hesitation. Means out of their own will, they always serve him. They are always at his service. They are true abd. Even angels, you know, we use for them apt ibadun mukramun. La yasbiquunahu bil qawl. So, la yastakbiruna an ibadatihi wa yusabbihunahu wa lahu yasjudun. They always do tasbih, they glorify him 
and do sajda. Or Surat Fussalat verse 38. Fa'in istakbaru. If there are people who are arrogant and they don't want to listen to God, to worship God, to serve God, we should know that there are those that without any hesitation, with pleasure, they do this. فَالَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّكْ يُسَبِّحُونَ لَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَهُمْ لَا يَسْأَمُونَ Those who are close to your Lord, those who are مُقَرَّب in the night and day, they glorify Allah. And they will never become tired. لا يَسْأَمُونَ so, Muqarrabun are the people that always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always do tasbih. It can be human beings, Rajalun la tulihim tajaratun malabay or it can be angels who are doing always tasbih and are never tired of that. There are also Muqarrabin from human beings who have this quality. As Allah says, these verses can, uh, include also uh, human beings who are Muqarrab. The only thing uh, that I want to mention now, is maybe there are other differences, but the only thing that I want to mention is that as far as I know, uh, in the Quran, the concept of dhikr is not used for angels. If you know, let me know. As far as I remember, we don't use dhikr for angels. We say angels always do ibadah of Allah, always remember Allah, but we don't say yazkurun Allah. We say they do tasbih, they do hamd. But we don't use the concept of dhikr. If you know any ayah that uses dhikr for angels, let me know. Why? Because dhikr is malake. You know the Adam wa malake. If someone can see and does not see, we can say, is blind. A'ma. Because it can be basir. But for example, for a piece of wood, we don't say it's blind. Because wood cannot see. So it must be in something that has the potential of seeing so that then we can say it's blind, okay? Or for example, guidance and misguidance. If we say they are Adam Malaki, because someone may say these are Zedain, but even if we say, for example, they are uh, Adam Malaki, you cannot say for an animal is misguided or a piece of wood is misguided, because it needs a subject that has potentiality. Okay? Alim and Jahil, again, they can be used for something that has potentiality. Angels never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never fail to praise Him and glorify Him. Therefore, for them, we don't use dhikr. Dhikr is when there is chance of forgetfulness and heedlessness, and then you remember. For us, for jinns, for angels, we don't use dhikr. Also, for example, we say, in men shayyan illa yusabbihu bahamd. Everything is doing tasbih, doing praise. 
But we don't say everything is doing zikr. If you want to use Quranic, you know, terminology. Why? Because these things, other than those who have free, you know, choices like human beings and jinns, they never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're continuously remembering Him, praising Him. So we use dhikr for someone that may remember or may not remember. If they remember, we say they do dhikr. If they don't remember, they are forgetting or heedless. You may say, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We are using zikr for Allah. Uzkuruni azkurkum. I explained at the beginning. Here, even in the case of Allah, zikr is used because Allah may remember or may not remember. In what sense? In the sense of remembering with favor, with kindness. Allah may forget you. Not that you disappear from his knowledge. No, may forget you may, means ignore you. Pay no attention to you. Let us reflect on the verses about dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man a'raza an dhikri fa inna lahu ma'ishatan dhanka. Let me find also the reference. Yes. This is Surah Taha, verse 130, sorry, 24, and continues. 125, 126. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ذَنْكَ Whoever turns away from my remembrance because human beings have been given choice to remember or not to remember. Angels, they are not forced to remember but they are made in the way that they love to remember. For them, remembrance of Allah is like sweetness for sugar. Sugar is not forced to be sweet. But sugar essentially is sweet. Otherwise, it's not sugar. Okay. So, angels voluntarily, because erada here is not in the case, in the sense of choice. Erada means to do what you want. You are not forced by external power. So human beings can choose. If they choose to remember Allah, then everything goes well. If they choose not to remember Allah, in dunya they have problem and in the hereafter they have problem. فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ذَنْكَ In dunya they would have a stressful life. Maybe we can say Ma'isha Tanzanka is the life with a stress. They feel squeezed. There is no freedom. There is no open air to breathe. There are lots of there are lots of pressures. Because only with remembrance of Allah you can have peace and tranquility. Allah Otherwise, you have a stress. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ أَعْمَى And we will resurrect such people on the Day of Judgment blind. قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Such people would ask, My Lord, why you resurrected me as blind? While I used to be able to see. You know, they had this idea, they have this idea that I should be resurrected in the same way that I lived. 
why I was living as a person who was able to see, but now I'm not able to see. قَالَ كَذَالِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا Yes, you would live according to the, you would be resurrected at, according to the way you lived. But not at the way that you physically lived. They misunderstood the equation. كَمَا تَعِيشُونَ تَمُوتُونَ وَكَمَا تَمُوتُونَ تُبْعَثُونَ Okay, so in the same way that you live, you will die in the same way that you die, you will be resurrected. Okay, so means the way that you live, you will be resurrected. But not that if in dunya you were blind, in akhirah you have to be blind. If in dunya you were able to see, in akhirah you will be able to see. If in dunya you would, for example, you had, you know, uh, disability, in akhirah you will be disabled. No, this is not the equation. It's not a matter of you know, physical life, physical appearance. It's a matter of your heart, your spirituality. If in dunya you were unable to acknowledge what is in front of you from the truth, means you were practically blind. You had closed your eyes. Okay, so now you will be rejected as a person who is blind. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَّسِيتَهَا In this way, our ayat was coming to you, our signs, our communications coming to you, but you were forgetting them. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Today you will be for, forgotten. This is opposite to أُذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ in dunya you will be forgotten in this sense. In akhirah you will be forgotten. Not that Allah, I repeat again and again because I don't want anyone to misunderstand. Not that Allah forgets them in the sense that Allah doesn't know that he has such a create creature. Doesn't know what is happening to them. No. This is a special kind of remembrance. Remembrance with favor. Sometimes you know someone but you ignore. You don't care because that person has been very stubborn and says, you know, I don't want you, I don't want you, I don't, okay, we leave it to yourself. So, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is possibility of forgetting in the sense of not having favor. Therefore, there is possibility of using the term dhikr. Udhkuruni azkurku. But, for angels, who continuously remember Allah, there is no chance of forgetfulness. We don't use the concept of dhikr. Also, for animals, insects, non-living beings, we don't use dhikr. We say remembrance of Allah in this form of tasbih, hamd, etc. But we don't use dhikr because it's not that they have to choose Either they are remembering or not. They are always remembering Allah. So zikr is used for human beings and jinns who have choice. They are instructed to remember Allah, but they are not forced. They may remember or they may not remember. So, inshallah, we continue this discussion, bi'ithnillah, next week it's the time of salat also here so i think for today this is enough i request you please yourself think review quranic verses see what our scholars have said about this important concept of dhikr so that inshallah if there is any way to improve this discussion and make it inshallah more comprehensive we can do it because it's one of the most fundamental concepts in Islamic spirituality and everything back goes back to zikr remembrance of Allah everything is a matter of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillah rabbil alameen do you have any question thank you 
you, Professor Shamali. May Allah bless you. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes. May I ask a question? Yes, Bismillah. Uh, in the previous session, you uh, explained perfectly the philosophy of Ziyara and yeah. the benefits of Ziyara uh, in, uh, and the concepts which relates to Vaj and blessings and something like that. Uh, I had a question in the previous session, but the time didn't yeah. uh, let me to explain it. So uh, we have a number of Rebaiyat that uh, explicitly uh, that after the martyrdom or after the death of Anbiya or Aksya, the bodies are elevated to the higher realm. As we have from Al Ali Abdullah alayhi salam, Qaman Nabiyan, Wala Wasiya Nabiyan, Yat of Al Al, Akhara Min Talata Al Yam, Atta Tumpa Rukahu, Wahadmahu, Walakmahu, Ela Sama. So, does it mean that when we go to visit and alayhi salam, that we visit an empty grave and uh, are the blessings that we talk about? And uh, the uh, benefactories that come from the Almighty God down to the servants because of their body or because of their remembrance, reappears constantly in their uh, shrines or because of something else. So, this is my question. Thank you. Uh, you know, the. the Shrines are the spiritual houses of the people that we visit. Yeah, it's bait. It's where they live. Sometimes you are thinking about the grave and the physical aspect of it. Sometimes you are thinking about the spiritual aspect of it. These personalities are not confined to that grave. Okay? It's not that they are in the grave. Even Mu'minin are not in the grave. Just their body is in the grave. Okay? But this grave is the point of connection for us who are in dunya with them. If we want to have, for example, better orientation, better direction for Salat, we turn to Qibla. But is Allah inside Qibla? Is there anything inside Qibla? No, but uh, still, this is house of Allah, and by going next to the house, uh, spiritually, you are getting closer to Allah. Even if it is not there, <laughs> Allah is not there. The soul, the spirit of Ma'sumin is not confined to that place, but by going there, or turning towards it even from distance, you have been given by Allah the best chance for a spiritual encounter. Then why, why do we kiss uh, the doors and uh, I don't, the places of the shrine? Because it's like Kaaba. Why you kiss Kaaba? Because Allah has chosen this place to be a place for remembering Him. For a place to ask him dua. Even uh, in the book Zi An Ziyara, I have quoted this hadith that Imam Hadi salam was ill and asked someone to send one of the Shia to Karbala to make dua for him in Al Ha'ir. And that person said, I will do it, but uh, Imam himself is like the one who is in Ha'ir. Means like Imam Hadi is like Imam Hussein. Why, you know, I should go there and pray for him? 
Then Imam Hadi alayhi salam explained that Rasulullah was better than Bait and Hajar Aswad. But still he was going there and touching and you know uh, visiting. And Imam says that Inna lillahi ta'ala biqa'an Allah has some places that he loves to be called from there. So, therefore, these are the places that Allah has chosen for our connection. They look to us as physical places, but these are not physical places. You know, the same way that we have body and soul, the shrines have also body and a spirit. Yes. We, we go near to the body of the shrine, to the physical site of the shrine. But in reality, that is a spiritual. So Imam is not confined to the physical shrine. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. So next session, inshallah, first I will ask you about your findings about the zikr, inshallah.